Yeah. First of all, thank you very much for giving me uh, this time slot. <clears throat> and without synchronizing Hazel's and my uh, presentation, we actually all in line. <clears throat> Greetings to all of you in Dubrovnik. Unfortunately, I cannot come because I'm right here at the hospital and I gotta move on at six o'clock here doing clinical work. My presentation is shorter and I will simply try to outline where we are in our initiative on how to finance SDG. Okay, this is the last slide of Hazel and this is my first slide. The interesting part of this SDG development is if you look closer to these gold targets, roughly about a third of these goals can be captured by private equity money or by the private business. But only a third, two thirds are only eligible as a private public partnership or they're simply commons. And for commons, we just don't have the real market system in place to make them happen. Okay, roughly. The point is for all these 17 SDGs, we have a political consensus since 2015, basically globally. Everybody on that planet wants these goals to be achieved. And we have also all the technology available. We know exactly how to overcome poverty, to end hunger, to access healthcare, et cetera. And finally, we also have the scientific evidence for each of these 17 goals. But there's one question missing. Where does the liquidity, where does the money come from in order to finance them? And second, how much money are we talking about? Okay, roughly. So we're basically talking about a four to five trillion dollar bill every year. So it's a T word, it's not the billions. And the second question is, where does that money come from to make these 17 goals reality? This is the question we've been trying to answer. If you look at sustainability solutions, this is a, a graph you don't know, it comes out of my work group. Okay, there's so many possibilities and multi-stakeholder options out there from geoengineering to renewables, to implement sinks, et cetera, et cetera. But we chronically, since several decades, miss one player. And the player is the monetary regulators, the monetary design, the way the financial system is built up itself. And I think it plays a crucial role if we want to achieve sustainability development goals. If you look at this process from a systemic perspective, you have this uh, gray air basically resembles the value chain. You start at the central bank and then you have the commercial banking system and all goes all the way down to the real economy of goods and services. And at the end of the value chain, we basically tax and fee our value chain in order to finance our future. This end of pipe financing of redistributing money to taxes, to fees, to regulations, to de- and reinvestment, or even to threat charity, is first of all relatively inefficient and far too low in volume. Just look at the figures. We know since Rio de Janeiro 1992, we wanted to finance our future with 0.5 to 0.7% of the GDP. We never achieved that. The whole world community, uh, except the Scandinavian countries, um, never achieved the 0.5%. And we're talking about actually one scale higher to make that happen. If you take this argument one step further, you can see that we have basically a 15 year timeline. Okay, we don't have 100 years, we have 10 to 15 years, roughly. And we have roughly a $5 trillion bill uh, to uh, meet. And that you, can, you can put that in a graph and say, okay, what are the options out there? The first option is increasing regulation. There's a whole debate about CSR, taxonomy, and stress tests, and banking resilience, et cetera, et cetera. And the second step would be taxation. We can talk about fees and subsidies, how to generate additional liquidity. The th a third step is all about impact funding. 
Okay, and if you speak with impact investors, I just did two days ago in Frankfurt with the Comets Bank. Okay, they are looking for state guarantees in order to de-risk their values. Otherwise, they're not going to get invested in in um, in global comets. The fourth level is basically so-called X swap strategies. A swap is no X swap strategy. The point is. If we are invested, let's say the Vatican is invested in a, in a fossil asset and want to get rid of it, it's not enough just to clean the balance sheet. We have to really exit the entire factory. We have to close down the coal mine. Otherwise, another management is taking over. Okay, this is just this is just mimicking the reality. So we have to X this market. And we have to swap it, the same equivalent, into a strategy which is more green, which is more alternative. Like Hazel said, desert green, pollution control. There's huge markets out there, but we have to find swaps, especially for institutional investors and especially for pension funds, which have huge amounts of assets skin in the game to ensure that they can swap their asset into something that makes more sense. The fifth level would be basically hybrid private-public partnerships. It takes too long to discuss that now here in detail in this format, but it's basically about performance contracting. You find a very sophisticated way where the private sector meets the public sector. The point is, if you take all these five steps together, this is all conventional financial engineering. It's all fine. It's wonderful. However, we will not be able to meet the five trillion within five years, getting global consensus, you know, or 50% of world population living in autocracies and we cannot even come up with the consensus at the Security Council at the UN, okay? So we need additional liquidity, and this is one of our arguments, we need additional parallel liquidity, either through the cryptocurrency scene, through community currencies bottom up, or regulated, by central banks, digital currency, CBDC. This is the full picture, all right? So if we are able to generate additional liquidity through CBDC, crypto or community currencies, and have it run through distributive ledger technology, third generation, we are generating huge amounts of positive second round effects, which will affect and steer our entire uh, economy towards a greener, fairer, and more sustainable future. I'm, I have two more slides. I'm not going to go more into details of that because these are all mechanical, technical stuff. But I rather want to show you what we did the last six months and what is going to happen the next months and I need for support. So summarizing, we need parallel additional targeted liquidity. This provides a mechanism that enables to shift towards SDGs. We should not rely on CSR or charity only. And if we do it in the right way, it can be done relatively cheap, fast, resilient, and fair. And if we end up doing it this way or a very similar way to this, we end up in a Pareto superior position, a Pareto superior equilibrium, which is actually for economists something rather rare to achieve. Right? But in doing so, we got to change our mindset where perifocal and metrifocal aspects are get together. This is happening the last four months. Okay? Um, I gave an international press conference in Berlin. The European Academy joined in. We're in the process of doing uh, the first and second part of the film with the Birkebach Media Group. I had about 20, 30 talks and keynotes all over the, all over the world. Uh, I spoke to the Executive Central Banker Summit in Frankfurt. At the moment, uh, we are in contact with media designers and filmmakers. Uh, the Simudine is a startup um, modeling firm with nonlinear modeling. They would prepare to do the modeling for us. I'm just lacking $300,000 to do that. I met SAP, Geobrain, Blockchain Community, Deutsche Bank, and two days ago, I had a meeting with the Commerce Bank board to discuss all that in details. Um, two days ago, no, three, three, four days ago, I met the, 
the global hidden champion in retail finance who currently finished to digitalize the entire India in Walmart, for Walmart. So they have a lot of expertise how to do retail finance digitization. And I gave a presentation to them and I said, look, this is our model. Uh, what do you think about? And he called up his CTO and 20 minutes later, he was on the phone and we had a meeting here in Germany um, and they can basically enable this mechanism corruption free in less than eight months on a country level, right? Um, the other thing is I had a, a London School of Economics student group and I gave them some money and said, look, uh, can you screen the entire global database in economics where this or a very similar mechanism has been ever described before? And they didn't come up with any. So there's other proposals out there which are very good, but this one we are proposing is somewhat uh, innovative. Okay, I have a media student group who is currently working on tables and figures and graph, and uh, a Munich publishing house uh, is going to publish a short version. It's only the 80 pager in English, Arabic, and Chinese at the end of this year, early next year. And we have a title protection uh, for Tao of Finance, which is basically the initiative um, in all languages. So what's missing? If you have contact to experts in politics, finance, or regulators, please let me know. If you have access to Bank of International Settlement or similar, or as I had a phone call today with the World Economic Forum, uh, we are in the process whether we can um, uh, promote that through Davos in January, February this year. Um, I'm still looking out to meet people from the Bilderberg Group to see whether I can make a presentation there. Um, I spoke with uh, an Indian uh, WAS member who is prepared to support me with the multiplier and blogger group from February this year to make that happen. Um, um, last month in Germany, there's an initiative called One Book, One University. And one of my latest books on that topic made it through that process, which means a whole university is debating one book for a whole semester cross-sectional and cross-disciplinary, right? I'm, where, you, where, I need, uh, re, uh, where I need support is in case you have any ideas to get this report out um, and funded in eight translations uh, or the nonlinear modeling with Simodyne. And the other thing is in order to make this happen, the distributed ledger technology on a country level, the CTO of this hidden champion uh, said we are currently working on trying to get um, um, funding of 10 million in order to make that happen. And the latest request is, uh, this was an idea from Patty I met in, um, in New York. She was saying, why not writing a letter and send it out to um, all financial ministers, regulators, and um, central bankers that there is a proposal out there each of you have now in your mail and we see how they would respond this is where i am at the moment thank you very much